Okay, so next Wednesday, February 3rd, University of Vermont faculty, students, alumni, and community supporters are coming together for a day-long online teach-in called The Liberal Arts at UVM, Defending Our Students' Educations. One class offered that day will be Why American Indian Literature, taught by James Williamson. James Williamson is a senior lecturer in English, now in his 31st year at UVM. Thank you, Jamie, for joining me today and for your patience as we tried to figure out this technology. Uh, glad to be here. Great. Um, so can you give us a preview of the uh, class that you will be leading next Wednesday? Well, I, I um, it's just sort of a general outline at this point. I'm still filling things in. Um, but uh, first, I thought I was gonna, I'm going to start by giving a little bit of uh, an overview on, um, I guess, what I call local context, um, i.e. the evolution or lack thereof of native studies and more specifically native literature, you know, here at UVM over the last 31 years. Um, and I'm thinking from pivoting to that is a little bit of extrapolating on the importance of native studies in general, you know, outside of my specific discipline, uh, but then to pivot ultimately to, uh, to native literature, which is my specialty, obviously. Um, and uh, I'll obviously in, in 50 minutes, there's not lots of time for lots of text, but I will probably, I will have a couple of examples of things just to, to run as, as um, examples of the points that I'm making. Um, but I will probably break, I, I am going to break down um, uh, that the section on native literature is really two sections, uh, each sort of building on the major areas that I've taught over the years um, within native literature, which is uh, specifically literary um, fiction in English um, by native writers, um, the majority of which has come out in the last 50 years, um, you know, or so. There's, there's a few uh, spots of novels if you go back from that, but um, the way I've explained earlier stuff to my students is that I could do an entire course um, or I could do a course on pre-1960s American Indian novel and we could read everything that had been written in terms of modern fiction um, and have elbow room within the course. Whereas stuff since 1970, say, um, you, you can never do that. There's, it, it would be absolutely impossible. So, so I'm gonna have some focus on that, but I also wanted to, I also include um, uh, a good bit of material um, focusing specifically on oral traditions. Um, so that's material which ultimately has its origins in indigenous languages rather than English. Um, obviously um, we read it in translation uh, and there's a lot of complexities with that, which I'll you know, just discuss, you know, what makes something authentic versus inauthentic, you know, and all that, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so the, um, you know, I, I think the importance of the oral traditions is taking that back is like, well, American literature doesn't start with uh, sermons and poems and um, personal narratives by Puritans in North New England. They came to a place where there was a massive um, uh, proliferation of tales of all sorts of, of sorts, um, also of all sorts, there we go. Um, poetry, oratory, you know, etc. Um, you know, which, which was massive, although the difficulties with it, um, emerged from the fact that it was coming from an oral context, which our written context doesn't really, it has problems dealing with, mm -hmm. um, but so that's that's sort of an, a general uh, overview of the of, of the different pockets, you know, which I'm going to build from. Okay. Okay. I, I can't I can't wait. Um, so you are UVM's only faculty member teaching Native American literatures and cultures, um, and we are fighting 
uh, to reverse the administration's cuts to the curriculum um, to keep your position and to keep your courses from vanishing. Uh, why is American Indian literature an integral part of any liberal arts education and, um, and critical to retain at UVM in particular? Um, for, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, like, I could, if you could, could we extend this to about three or four hours here? Uh, no, I, I think um, I, one of the sort of glib responses to that that popped into my mind was um, simply is why is um, because it's there um, on one level. And this is sort of centralizing uh, the academy on its uh, you know, own terms. Um, it's there to ignore it is to distort what you don't ignore um, because things interrelate with each other. Um, in, you know, again, in, in sort of a, a academy terms, you know, is what is constructed as a sort of basis of operation in any discipline. Um, within, within the academy, um, there should be a responsive reflection of objective um, inductive inquiry. Um, and to sideline um, something or ignore it means you are no longer have the integrity, um, you know, in terms of the viewpoint that, that you're espousing or developing. Um, when you start sort of just arbitrarily, I'm gonna, not going to consider this, I'm not going to consider that. Um, so that's, you know, in terms of intellectual, and I, I thought just two quick sort of you know, scenarios is one, one thing I have, uh, you know, one thing I would say I um, think of is like, a, what intellectual integrity does um, something purporting to be American history um, have if it begins with Jamestown and Plymouth and the indigenous peoples are only seen in terms of their effects on groups of people who had no interest in them and then were mainly interested in getting them out of the way. Um, you know, literature, you know, what intellectual integrity does something purporting to uh, survey American literature, as I you know, mentioned, A, you know, we start, oh, the beginnings are poetry, the Puritan poetry, um, 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 sermons and so on and so forth. Um, but we're gonna ignore the fact that there was a massive, um, you know, body of what we can call verbal art um, existing at that point within every Native American culture, you know, that, that was around. So that, I mean, I think is absolutely important in terms of, A, if you're going to be claiming to have any sort of inductive um, intellectual integrity, you know, um, this is a, you know, the population was here for millennia. Um, you need that perspective. Um, and if you don't really, you know, uh, incorporate that in any sense, um, uh, what you end up with is sort of like Disney, you know. Um, the other side of it, I think this bleeds into other issues. You know, there's uh, social justice, uh, marginalization, um, othering, um, and all those kinds of things. And I, I see this as being very much um, linked to lack of intellectual integrity. Um, but what does literature do? It provides um, the necessary voice, which, hum in which humanizes something which is other. And this is particularly with, with, with the modern fiction is um, you're getting without you know, any, any filter. You are having someone who is articulating a perspective using the medium of literary fiction um, to explore. Um, and that, you know, anybody who's into literature and obviously I've spent my life on literature, um, and you have too, <laughs> you know, this is one of, one of the, one of the things this is, is it's, it, it becomes an end perspective. I've found all my life is actually, I learn more about other cultures. The first thing to do is to actually read the literature that's written from people coming from that viewpoint. Um, but, uh, it also, I mean, I think that enables, you know, uh, undercutting, you know, stereotypes that reinforce the process of marginalization and dehumanization. Um, and 
also, it, I, you know, I mean, I think that that's basically being humane, uh, but it's also, you know, I think, I think in this case is where intellectual integrity and uh, a humane viewpoint, um, you know, are absolutely linked to each other. And so I think, I mean, A, cutting, you know, at this point is cutting native literature. Um, I mean, there are two other um, courses in the university devoted to native studies um, in, in anthropology and history as well. Um, I think because I was teaching under the aegis of uh, race and ethnicity and literary studies, which is English 57, um, I taught a lot of sections of it. So in, in fact, um, the exposure of a lot of the students here at UVM to native anything um, is a great deal of it was the courses were the courses that I was teaching. Right. Um, and, and that's not, you know, you know, sidelining. I, I mean, I thought that actually both what I've, what I've heard about the, uh, both the anthropology and history courses is that they're great. Um, but, um, but, you know, so I, but I think in terms of numbers the, and, and I think to come back to my original point is like a it is um, with looking at you know context and history. Uh, I would go a it's great that I'm teaching this, and it, but then I go is like you know I'm this I'm a, a white guy teaching this. Uh, why is there not a native scholar here? Why is there this one sort of cordoned off um, course that teaches literature? Now I, I did not not to you know, I'm not disparaging. Uh, anything. I mean, there's are plenty of, I think, uh, people teaching American literature who who inc will include native stuff in the context of other courses. Um, but um, but you know, in terms of material that's only, uh, you know, um, focusing specifically on native stuff, it's it's like it's it's pretty poor when you think about it, right. and it's being cut back. You know, so. Basically this year, I mean, I'm doing English 33 this year. I'm doing the, the American Indian novel. Yeah. Um, English 33 was finally developed as a slot for native literature a couple of years ago. It sort of went through, um, Dan Fogel, you know, pushed that through. Um, and it's finally appearing this year. And I'm gonna introduce it to my students as well. You're lucky you're taking this because this is the only time it looks like it's gonna ever be offered. Unless we are successful. so. And this is where yes, um, I yeah. hope that everybody is going to tune in next uh, Wednesday and also tune into getting involved in UVM United Against the Cuts because, uh, you know, just getting um, English 33 on the books was a was a hard one um, uh, labor and we want to make sure that Jamie continues um, to uh, be able to uh, share this knowledge, um, these perspectives, this this literature uh, with UVM students. So Jamie, thank you so much for joining us and I'm going to stop the live stream now and we'll see how we did. Okay. All right, so... <laughs>